Hey, what's up, guys? This is Dwight here with Retro Crypto YouTube channel. Getting everything set up here for this live stream. Got a lot I want to talk about. I want to talk about Cardano. Obviously, I want to talk about Cardano. But I want to talk about a lot more than Cardano. I want to talk about Cardano. I want to talk about the Cardano ecosystem. I want to talk about Hex. I want to talk about Zen Crypto. I want to talk about crypto news. There's a ton I want to talk about today, guys. But before we get started, I must say this. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just an ordinary guy out there on the internet with a passion for cryptocurrency. It's essential that you do your own research before making any and all financial decisions. All right, guys. Oh, I started off with the wrong screen. I hope that's not a bad sign. I was a little late getting in here. Apologize. I was supposed to start at 430. It's 436. Ah, one of those days. But um, yeah, I'm happy to be in here. I haven't done a lot of streams lately. I was sick. I actually got like a... I don't know. I may have had strep throat for the first time. I don't know what it was, but it was killing me. And I, I, I couldn't couldn't kick it. But anyway, got a nice live stream here. There's one of you in here. I want to thank you for joining. Make sure you hit that like button, whoever you are. Um, got any questions or comments, make sure you leave it. And again, I want to thank you for joining me. All right, I'm just going to jump right in at it. And hopefully some more people come. They do, they do, they don't, they don't. You know what I'm saying? All right, well, Mark is looking pretty good today. Um, it's not looking great. But it's looking good, and I'm going to explain to you why I feel that way, because I see a healthy pullback taking place, which means that is an opportunity to dollar cost average and to enhance your holdings, getting ready for the real bull run. This was not a bull run, guys. This was like a taste. This was like a little hiccup. Bull runs are astronomical. It's when you see I, – I, it's hard to explain. It's hard to express. you got to actually experience it to watch something make a 10x in a matter of a week. Be, like it's just absolutely amazing but what we just experienced was a little hiccup here and um yeah big time good times are coming they're just not here yet and i like these little pullbacks they're healthy pullbacks i actually took profit on hex this week um when i purchased it when it was down in the past recently and now hex is moving back up so this is absolutely awesome all right so four to one person that's in here with me right now because that's how the streams work Please make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Um, and there is a membership available if you're interested for the channel. All right. So let's jump right into the technical analysis here. And what I want to talk about first is Bitcoin. Uh, let's look at this Bitcoin chart, guys. And this Bitcoin chart has a lot to do with a news that was released earlier this week, which was from... Um, I think it was yesterday. Uh, Gensler warns crypto firms to comply with rules after cracking Shutter's U.S. staking program. But before we talk about that, let's go back to the um, Bitcoin here. And I want to do a little bit of technical analysis for you guys to let you see, let you know what I'm seeing here. And what I'm seeing is we're going to put Bitcoin on a four hour chart. And the first day that we're going to start with is going to be right here. Right here, uh, February 7, 2023, and you're going to notice that there was a change for previous trend on that date. That's what that little purplish blue, I think it's actually purple, uh, triangle is. And then a bullish continuation, and then a bearish continuation. Then there's a short signal that fired off. After that short signal, if you don't, if you haven't noticed, Bitcoin has been dropping ever since. And now that is what the um, Blue Manchu Cypher A chart. Now, if I look at it with the Cypher B chart, it's a little bit more interesting. You see that it has a sell signal that fires off here on that same day. And we're riding through this channel. But I think we may have possibly bottomed out today in that channel started that started on the 7th. And that would be right here, that little green line right there. I think that that channel, has the momentum has bottomed out at that point, And the moment, it's about to swing back around. It's a strong possibility. The reason why I'm saying it's a strong possibility that Bitcoin has reached its bottom is because this long signal here and this long signal have confirmed each other and the momentum starting to move upward in a, in a positive direction. Also, with the momentum moving up in a positive direction, you'll notice that the volume is just started to move up right here. The volume started to peak up in a positive direction for Bitcoin, and that is absolutely good. Now, the cash flow is represented by the red here. Now, cash flow is negative, but it's starting to look like there's some positive movement for Bitcoin. Now, this is with the four-hour chart. Now, when we look at the two-hour and the one-hour chart, it'll definitely tell us what's about to come. Because I'm actually thinking about trading, even though I don't think trading's 
healthy unless you know what you're doing. And I do know what I'm doing. I just have a habit of not sticking to my plan, which is not healthy. <laughs> All right. But anyway, let's look at this on the two-hour chart. If you look at the two-hour chart here, and right here, you'll see Bitcoin is holding out. Let's do a little vertical line, horizontal line here to help you guys out here. So you'll see Bitcoin's like right here. This is the support level right now for Bitcoin at 21,462. And that's where it's bouncing off currently. Um, the Now on the two hour chart, you'll see again, we have a long signal opening up. Oh, just opened up a brand new channel here. You will see the volume trying to move in a positive direction and the momentum moving upward with the uh, movement you say for B chart. Both of these are positive indicators, guys. Absolutely positive indicators. Uh, oh, is my channel acting up again? It did this to me before. Oh, wow. So as I look back at my stream here, how far off are you guys from me? I think you're very far behind me. Okay, I hate when this happens. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna keep going. It's already happened, so oh well, so much for chatting with you guys. All right, anyway, I'm just gonna keep going as a regular video. But you can see that, um, you can see right here that the channel is moving in a positive direction. Uh, now, RSI, the RSI actually has Bitcoin down here. The RSI is actually showing that Bitcoin is currently over sold right now which is a bit disappointing but you can't stop it from being what it is and what is it right now it's oversold what can you say now uh if we look at bitcoin with the two hour chart i mean i'm sorry the one hour chart sorry guys let me let me explain what's happening every so often i go live and everything looks good and all of a sudden the streaming just gets really really slow and then like my chats don't keep up with everybody else. And it's like super frustrating because it, it it takes away from the stream. But I'm just gonna have to go with it and suck it up, buttercup, right? All right. Anyway, so uh with the one hour chart here, you're gonna see there is a possibility right here of manipulation, another possibility of market manipulation right here. That's what those two yellow X stand for. And then we have a bearish continuation, a bearish continuation, a bearish continuation. Now, um, the again, you'll see that the um, Cypher B, Vlumen 2 Cypher B, is looking good on the hourly chart also because, again, this long signal was confirmed with the momentum here moving up in a positive direction. So that's something to be excited about. Now, the RSI is not looking that healthy for Bitcoin, honestly, right now. And I'm not completely sold with what the Vlumen 2 chart is showing me. And I'm not 100% so that it's going to be made going the right direction. Now, I'm going to show you all what else I'm looking at here. Now, I threw, I, drew, I threw, oh my gosh, I drew out this chart here earlier. And you'll see that Bitcoin is definitely on a downward trend. There's a very obvious downward trend here. Now, it does have good support right here. And the support line is sitting at 21535 But if that support does not hold, the next ver strong support level that I believe that will hold for it will be right down here at $20,922. So I do foresee Bitcoin making a um, significant pullback. All right. Um, not too significant, but it's definitely on a downtrend. And I don't think I'm not 100 percent convinced that this support level is going to hold. Uh, this one may hold, may or may not hold, but I do not think that this one's going to hold. Now, if this one does not hold, the next one will be here, down at 20388 And then the next one will probably be right about down here. Yeah, this looks like a little, yeah, this spot here will be a support level. And right about there at 18760 which everybody's probably already saying the same thing, obviously, right? It's just saying the same thing for a reason. All right, for you guys that are in here, make sure you hit that like button and make sure that you take a moment to subscribe. Help a brother out. Join the retro crypto community. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, the next one up is on Bitcoin. I want to talk about is the exponential moving average for Bitcoin. Exponential moving average, I have set for the four hour chart. You'll see that Bitcoin on a four hour chart is, well, you know what? Let's do the daily chart first. That's some fun. All right. The daily chart was hardcore bullish, as you can see. And then, boom, candle wick down halfway in there and then all the way in. So, Bitcoin 
is not completely bearish yet, but it's showing very significant bearish tendencies. And I'm suspecting that it's going to become bearish completely. Um, it Hopefully, but it hasn't. There's hope, though, guys. There is definitely hope. We have to see how this plays out. Now, you look at the four-hour chart, not so much hope. I'll take that back. It is bearish on a four-hour chart. I, I should have known that's what it was going to look like. And then on a two-hour chart, more bearishness. And the one-hour chart, which mainly just for traders, completely bearish. So that's where Bitcoin stands with exponential moving average. Now, with Ichimoku, this fun little chart that you guys know that I love to use, you'll see that Bitcoin is currently bearish right now. It's predicted it to be bearish for the next four days. And that will take us out to what, February 14th. Now, if you look at Bitcoin with the two-hour chart, it is completely bearish for that same distance. Let's see what it does if we do it on a daily chart. Daily chart actually has Bitcoin being bullish into the distant future. Now, when I say bullish to the distant future, that means bullish out to March 7th of 2023. Hey, for the people that just joined, make sure you hit that like button. I need y'all to hit that like button. I have one like. I have three viewers. At least that's what they're saying. I'm not sure this is correct, actually. But I need you guys to hit the like button so that YouTube shares the video. We're trying something different. I did a different title with Cardano instead of doing Zen Crypto and Hex because that's the only thing people want to see these days. But there's a lot more going on out there. Um, all right. So that's where Bitcoin um, is. Now, next thing, before I jump into the Cardano, because I do want to do a deep dive into Cardano, let's go ahead and talk about Hex real quick. Now, I bet you when I say the word hex, all of a sudden, all of these viewers are going to drop in. Why? Because I swear that the YouTube algorithm hears me say that I'm going to do technical analysis on hex. And the hexicans just, they just flock in. It's so weird. Now, I don't know if that's going to work or not. So we're going to get started with hex. Now we're at, I have three. So let's see what happens. All right. So taking a look here at hex with the market, uh, Vu Manchu cipher chart here. Um, and I start with the four hour chart instead of the one hour chart and the one hour chart is not too exciting. Not really. All right. So we'll start off on February 8th. We had a bearish continuation. And then on February 9th, we actually had a short signal. That's where that little red X is, which is telling say the market's going to do a pullback. And then we had a pullback. All right. Uh, looks like the support level from that pullback rested at 0.04216. Now, on a Cypher B chart, you'll see that the cash flow is actually positive, but the momentum is down, and we're definitely approaching the end of a uh, sell channel right here, as you can see there. There's a nice little healthy pullback. Uh, the volume is definitely on the downside also. Now, the RSI, surprisingly enough, for Hex is actually floating right in the middle, which is neutral, so it's not oversold or overbought. Now, this is what I wanted to tell you guys that I did. I took my profits on Hex. Yes, I took profits on Hex. So when it did this little run up, I set a certain uh, amount that a certain US dollar amount I didn't want to drop beneath. And anytime my Hex went above that level, I took those profits. And I'm very glad I took those profits. Um, it was an excellent move. It was a great move. It, it was great. And I'm going to continue to do that on this bear market because what I have not had is dry powder. So what I would do is I would dollar cost average. I would buy in at different projects and I would just hold um, or hodl, which I love hodling. I think it's very healthy behavior, but sometimes you just take those profits. That's why I'm in a situation I'm in now. I'm taking profits. I have official dry powder sitting on the side, waiting for a significant pullback. And then you, I'll, I'll pounce. That is the plan. All right. Um, right now, Hex, it, with the uh, two-hour chart, you can see the short signal, a sell signal, and a bearish continuation. It's not looking good right now. Um, you can see that the momentum swung already. There is a long signal on a B chart. So the volume looks like it moved up on a two-hour chart. So Hex may be about to pull pull around. Looks like it's pulling around. Yes, it is. It's up 0.003 of a percent or something. It's, I'm sorry, it's up 7%. So Hex is making a swing around. So that's cool. That's really good news. Now, if you look at Hex with the Ichimoku chart, for the next four days, it's actually predicting Hex to be bullish for the next four days. And that's pretty awesome. Now, for the next, uh, that's four days. Let's look at the two dare. Two dare is looking pretty good. It's got a little bit of bearishness towards the end. Now, if we look at Hex with the daily chart, Hex is out through March 7th. Hex is actually not looking. 
half bad in my opinion, guys. Let me get a quick drink here. You will never understand how thirsty a YouTuber gets until you try this. So weird. Something about this microphone. It just sucks all the moisture right out of you. It's so weird. Oh, I'm so frustrated because I want to chat with you guys, but I can't because this the stream is lagging way behind where I'm at right now. Yeah, uh, it drives me crazy. But anyway, if you got any questions or comments, make sure you hit, hit up the chat. Talk to me. Everybody's so quiet today. It's like certain days of the week, everybody's chatty caddies or whatever, chatty patties. And then certain days, everybody's just quiet today. Everybody's quiet. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm sure there's a project I want to talk about that I don't even know about. What do you do? Let's chat. All right. So anyway. All right, so let's take a look here at what Hex with Exponential Movie Average on a four-hour chart. You'll see that Hex has pulled back into here, and it is definitely, mm, I don't really consider this bearish. It's showing bearish tendencies, but I don't really consider it extremely bearish just yet. Now, the two-hour chart is not going to lie. The two-hour chart, uh, more bearish than a four-hour chart. So let's go with the one-hour chart. Uh, yeah, that's say hex is bearish right now, guys. It is what it is. Even though down the chart saying, yeah, I remember the chart saying it's bearish, but it's also up seven percent. So you gotta kind of it is what it is. So we are charting it. Yet yeah, technically, it's in a bearish range, but eh, I'm considered. I don't. I consider it more bullish just by the price action. But the chart, the exponential chart, and the Vu Manchu chart are both saying that it's bearish. If to each their own. All right. Uh, now, yeah, guys, you know, I'm going to actually go against the charts today. I'm going to stop and do a little bit of drawing. I haven't done this with you guys in a long time with this, so I guess it's needed anyway. So let's go ahead, and we're going to put hex on a daily chart, all right? Now, this is how I like to look at things to keep it in reference. So I'm going to look at hex with the daily chart. I'm going to put a, a line here. All right, so that's what what line is that? That's going to be our control line, support line, and that's at 0 0.0022. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a vertical line over here, and this vertical line is going to tell me what hex is, um, when did hex really lift off? So we're going to say it started to pick up, really lift up, and stay up right about here, and that was December 16th of 2020. All right, and we're in 2023 now. Wow, we're getting I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, that's why I'm retro, I guess. All right, so that's our, that's our little support control line there, a strong support line. And right now, from that strong support line there to this point with hex, what I want to do first is I'm going to now. This is the tools that anybody can use. They're all free, guys. It's just a matter of you stopping and teaching yourself. And one of my biggest mistakes is not teaching myself sooner. So I'm just curious, well, how much is hex up from that control line? So hex is up 1,172% since December of 2020, which is pretty dang interesting, you know? But for giggles, let's see how far hex is down from its all-time high. Now, from its all-time high, hex is down... 88.9 percent so just perspective now what perspective does this put me on for hex or put me in the bottom floor is where you want to get in guys and that's why i love zen crypto it's the bottom floor so the people who got in early with richard hart and believe it or not i knew about richard hart early on i just did a twitter poll the twitter poll wasn't positive so i didn't go with it and biggest mistake of my life i'd be driving lambos if i did but you can definitely see the difference of where Hex is pulled back to now from his all-time highs of 51 cent versus if I had got into it when it was at zero two zero zero two two cents. Uh, it's just super interesting to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Now, his all-time high point was uh, September 19th, 2021. So we're going to say, all right, whatever. I missed that first run. So I want to be around for the second run. Where did it bottom at? Where, where was the bottom out point, uh, Retro Crypto, Mr. Dwight? Where was that bottom out point? All right. So it is right here. The, the It bottomed out roughly. Let me make sure I get this right, guys. Oh, and, uh, that doesn't quite look right. Oh, it gave me a second. Oh, I know what's wrong. Okay. So it looks like it bottomed out right about here. 
which is that's not 579 percent oh okay i know what it's wrong here let me drag this down boom and i'll bring this up here so bottomed out right around uh i don't think it was a penny and a half so i'm questioning this if you give me a second i'll make sure i get this right okay yeah it did drop as low as a penny and a half that's scary <laughs> all right <laughs> So, excuse me, I'm sorry. So, bottom out of December 29th, uh, 2022. And since then, it did improve by 257%. So, the trick is when it does its next pullback, who knows how significant it will be? Who knows? Paul's chain may be released tomorrow. When it does the next pullback, I wouldn't be able to pounce on it and, you know, take those profits. But I did buy some at these lower levels. I don't think anything under two cents, but I did buy a bit and it was a great move. And I took my profits and I paid off a credit card that I had to pay down. <laughs> and as you know, we're waiting on Richard Hart with uh, Paul Sh Richard Hart to release uh, Paul's chain. And I'm, one thing I have noticed is that Richard Hart has been discussing it more often lately. Uh, see if there's any recent news. No recent news. All right. So let me type in Richard Hart over here on Twitter. If you're not on Twitter, you're not into crypto. Just so you know, you need to be on Twitter. Can't believe you're not if you aren't. Uh, but Richard Hart has been releasing a lot of information. He's he's moved on from the uh, marketing. The um, I, f I cannot remember the name of the marketing for the life of me. But anyway, the annoying marketing. And he is is focusing on just pure data to notify to notify everybody where. The project stands so uh earlier was this today on a knife he said bug slaying geff and aragon are building the same header but re aragon is generating a different try route this is breaking the aragon sync and he this code i couldn't t i see zeros is a lot of zeros i don't see ones do i see any ones yeah i guess so but yeah this is like i don't know what it means but what i do know it means is that uh, Richard Hart's taking a different approach to Hex, which is great. And I think that the crypto community will be much more accepting of him coming at him this way than in his previous ways. All right. Um, let's jump over here. Don't go away the people in here viewing this right now. I want to try something. Uh, I want to check something very quickly here. I've never done this before while going live. But I wonder if I should change something. It'll only take a second. Just bear with me. And live. Just bear with me. Yep, that's what I thought was wrong. All right, so let me change this here. All of a sudden, I should get more followers. How funny things work, huh? All right. Let me change this here. Bear with me, guys. I want to get some people in here chatting. I tried some new uh, keywords, and the keywords that I use don't seem to be getting any attention. But I swear I'm tired of using the same titles of the same projects just to get people's attention even though there's a lot of other things going on out there. It's like as a YouTuber, you kind of get sucked up into the communities and it's like you either perform or you, you got to go. <laughs> but I think I can make this work. Let's see if this works. All right, so back to it. I uh, hope you guys didn't leave. You've, make sure you guys hit the like buttons that are in here. All right, so back to it. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Um, next, after a hex, let's take a look at Zen uh, Zen Turbo because most hexicans at this point have softened up to Zen Turbo. The few, I mean, uh, Zen Zen Crypto Zen by Jack Levin. Um, the few that haven't, eh, whatever, teach their own, right? Uh, Jack Levin's been working diligently on the uh, new blockchain that he's been. I have not been following as closely as I should have. I've kind of just been looking into more projects. That's why I wanted to do this video today. More bottom four projects. Or they're not quite bottom four. Well, yeah, they are. 
I would consider him still bottled before. But uh, Jack Levin, he's just been working diligently on the Zen ecosystem, um, the Zen NFTs. I know that um, Binance Smart Binance Smart Chain NFTs just launched. Um, and we are definitely, well, what's this? I didn't even know about this. Hold on. Sorry about that. Oh, that's the Zen NFT Verity chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I really haven't been following Zen. I'm kind of like, I'm definitely part of the Zen community. Uh, I like the I like the project, but I kind of I don't know I got bored I guess. Uh, and <laughs> he's been working on the oh sorry about that. He's been working on the um right here the X one the um the blockchain for Zen, and you can see that's going on just fine without a hitch. It's kind of oh I got no Rivera change the keywords go figure right. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Make sure you hit that like button. I need it today. My viewing is low 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 today, but I'm staying motivated. But anyway, here's the um, X1 DevNet flying through your screen here. What does it all mean? These are different blocks. It's fast. It's very fast. <laughs> he said it was fast. Oh, my God. Look at this. Um, but anyway, they, this baby is just powering along. I, I want to do another interview with Jack. Uh, I sent him a message, but I guess, I don't know. Maybe I did something to upset him. Sorry. <laughs> but I do like the project. But you can see that. Um, let's see what this guy's here. Uh, for the liquidity, Uniswap, LP positions, liquidities, NFTs. Yeah, it's, wait a minute, deposit, open, I don't know, buy side, LPs, NFT. Anyway, yeah, it's just a lot of the same going on. I kind of got upset with the project, but I had to chill out on it. And what made me upset about Zen was I took him, it was my fault, but I brought a lot of NFTs on the secondary market. And because I brought them on OpenSea, I did not receive credit that I felt that I should have been due on the X1 DevNet. But it's also my fault because I jumped into something before I thoroughly investigated it. And that's on me. But anyway, but if you look at Zen right now, if you look at Zen Monitor, uh, let's see, how much does it cost to mint? Um, oh my gosh, it's a little expensive right now. So I guarantee you, <laughs> with minting fees at $13.69, uh, I guarantee that the unlocked address trends has dropped off astronomically with fees like that, which it has. Um, and here's a yearly, which hasn't really been around for a year yet. Started October, I believe. But uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, estimated earnings. So, so if you wanted to mint, it would take 189 days just to break even. Now, if you wanted to create a mint with the current fee, the key fee amount. So, quite interesting. But I think things are coming along just like he said they would. And that's huge. That's very important. Because what they have learned is that listen to the devs. Listen, not the devs. Listen to the founders. The founders, they tell you. It's up to you to listen to them. But they tell you what's going to happen if they're good founders. And it's just playing out like he said it was going to play out, guys. So this is – I'm just going to be patient and calm. Now, my claim monitor, I have tons and tons that I need to claim – but, you know, it's, I'm just going to be patient about it, you know? I'm just going to be patient. Uh, I, got a lot of, I got a lot of hope and expectations for Zen. What can I say? Um, right here, you can see the Gwe's on fire. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting for the X1. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm waiting for the X1 and for Finex, guys. I mean, there's not much to chart out for it. I guess I should. Anybody in the comments, do you tell me when to chart this out? I would. But um, you can see the burns at 10.12% now, which is really good. Um, yeah, well, you know what? Let's chart. Let's go ahead and chart out one of these ends because I haven't looked at it lately. I just decided to leave it alone. And ooh, maybe I should be charting it out because I haven't even been paying attention. I might even be profitable. I think I am. Wow, all right. So, first one that we're going to look at this is the one on Polygon, and Polygon is on fire, guys. It is still on fire. I thought it cooled down, but it did not. And this actually has me hopeful for Zen. Um, Definitely. Now, currently with the Polygon chart, it's definitely on an upward trend. Trend line. It's definitely on an upward trend uh, right now for Polygon. And Polygon is Matic, of course. But uh, Zen is definitely trending upward. And yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's a change for previous trend on February 7th. Have a long signal. Bullish, bullish, bullish. Bearish continuation. All bullish bearish bullish bearish 
So, yeah, this is pretty exciting for Zen. I don't know what you guys are thinking about it, but that looks pretty dang good. Any comments, please? Nobody said nothing in the chat today. It's so weird. Maybe I went live too. Did I go live too early or something? Man, all my regulars, there's like nobody here. Wow. I feel lonely. <laughs> but anyway, thanks for the people who did show up at least, right? Take a blessing where you can. Uh, all right. So uh, make sure if you just joined it, you hit the like button. Anybody that just joined. Live stream, comment, show. Let's see what this is saying here. Okay. All right. So, oh, here we got Will. Will's in here. Got to rewatch. Thanks for the update. Gave you a like. Thanks, Will. There's somebody. Yeah, that was at 5.05. All right. So, let's keep it going here. Uh, let's see. I uh, lost my track. I got excited. I saw Will jumped in here. All right. So, um, so that's about for Zen, but I'm just kind of on the sidelines. But I really, it, it is moving. And the problem with a project like this is like you forget about it. And the way Jack kind of referred to it a lot of times is like you're supposed to, you're not really supposed to get up, forget about it. You're supposed to mint and mint and mint until it's too expensive to mint. And then you're supposed to sell your mints and for profit. And guess what? I need to relook at some of my minting because things that I think it may, I think I'm making, I'm thinking profitable. Honestly, it is damn shame to talk that way, but yeah, that's a good thing. But that was the polygon. So I went on this whole polygon tip when I started minting a crap load of polygons. Uh, let's just go there. Let's just look at it. I don't care. It is not worth. It's not like it's a million dollars or nothing. So uh, mint claim. I want polygon. So let's see what the polygon is looking like. Yeah. I mean, I just literally sat for the computer and just kept hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting uh, with large batch manner with coin tool. But yeah, I'm happy. I'm very happy. 108 days for I can get any of it, but it's working out well. But anyway, so yeah, don't don't give up on Zen just yet, guys, because um, I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. This is up along there. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that one, guys. Wow. Now this one here is. Let's see. I had one for. Binance, this is Polygon. All right, Binance is right here. Binance is definitely doing a bit of a pullback, a significant drop. Uh, so, yeah, and wait and see. All right, enough is in. And let's keep this moving on here. Uh, before we do the whole deep, deep dive into Cardano, Ergo, and all the projects under Cardano, I want to talk about uh, this article here that really affects us all in the crypto world. There's a couple of them. But this one here really affects us. Um, where we got this? All right. SEC Chief Gensler warns crypto firms to comply with rules after cracking Shutter's U.S. staking program. A U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC Chair Gary Gensler is warning other platforms to take note of crypto exchange Kraken's move to halt its staking service in a country and cough up a $30 million fine. Companies like Kraken can offer investment contracts and investment schemes, but they have to have full, fair, and truthful disclosure. And this puts the investors who watch your program in better position. That's our basic bargain. They were not complying with their basic laws, Gensler said during Friday appearance, CNBC Squat Boss. When asked by show host Andrew Ross Sorkin how the enforcement action might apply to other yield earning programs such as crypto exchange Coinbase earn program, Gensler said uh, labels, whether a program is called lend, yield, or earn didn't matter as much as the underlying economics. If somebody's uh, taking their tokens and transferring it to that platform, that platform controls it. And guess what happens if they go bankrupt? You stand in line at the bankruptcy court, Gensler said, taking aim at the string of bankruptcy cases in progress, including that of crypto lender Celsius Network. The U.S. Bankruptcy Court judge ruled in January that any uh, crypto deposited on a platform as part of its earned program belonged to Celsius and not customers. There is a saying in crypto that there's, uh, that says not your keys, not your coins. So those are other pro uh, platforms should take note and seek to compliance and to compliance through the proper disclosures and registration and the like. Gensler's added. I have an issue with this article already, guys. I see why people are so pissed off. 
because Gensler's speaking for the crypto world like he's in favor of crypto, like he's doing crypto people a favor. That has me so upset. What do you think, Will? Uh, Will just said, uh, people think it's only for centralized, but it's everyone, including decentralized. We might have to move outside the USA. Yes, indeed. We just might have to. Um, wow, I can't believe uh, they're saying that crypto that says not your art. Although the regulators have blocked crypto staking, which lets users lock their assets on platforms in exchange for a reward percentage over time, the U.S., the firms offering these those services may simply continue to do so from other jurisdictions. Sorkin noted again, like Gensler replied, 330 million Americans are our clients adding crack and new how to register others know to register. It's just a form on our website. Eh, whatever. All right. So Gensler, he's trying to act like they're looking out. The SEC is attempting to look like they're looking out for crypto investors. And we all know they don't care about us. There's no other way to word it. They don't care about us. Um, it's just big industry, big banks getting their foot in the door and controlling the federal government to their favor. It's pretty ridiculous if you ask me. Uh I see. Charles Hoskinson says Cardano ecosystem is fine after SEC bans cracking U.S. staking service, but there's a catch. All right. Cardano co-founder Charles Hoskinson says ADA remains on solid footing despite the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission's SEC crackdown on Kraken's crypto staking services. In a new YouTube video, Hoskinson says the fact the SEC charged Kraken for violating securities law for its staking services will force a larger national discussion about the issue. Kraken settled the matter by paying $30 million fine and removing staking from its platform. But Hoskinson says it does not appear the SEC is deeming blockchain project like ADA as the securities just, just because there is staking involved, but instead targeted Kraken for the way the platform has structured its staking services for clients. Obviously, there is going to be a national discussion now about these things, especially now that Kraken and others are getting involved. It does not appear that there's any attempt to say, oh, well, staking mechanics somehow now make the underlying asset a security. You'll probably see a lot of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt over the Twitter, Reddit, and other spaces saying, oh, well, if staking is security, that must mean the underlying asset is. So Ether is now security or ADA is now security. Let's be very clear. You can take wheat which is a commodity or gold, a commodity, and put it into some sort of package or structuring where that package is a security or that activity that you're doing with is regulated. But that doesn't make wheat or gold a security. So you don't have that uh, transit, transit, transitivity there where what do with stake pools could infer the underlying asset has a problem. We haven't seen any attempt to do that at the moment. All right, so that's what Charles had to say about this. However, Hoskin acknowledged there is a degree of unpredictability when it comes to the next moves by the government in regulating the crypto sector. He also expressed concerns that the government moves to increase staking regulations. It may fail to draw distinctions among the different crypto staking models, such as between ADA's model and Ethereum ETH. So uh, well, I might as well read this last part. Now, obviously, again, governments are unpredictable. Facts and circumstances could change. And we see things the same time you guys do as well. We'll cross the bridge if it comes. All right. So anyway, eh, I'm not too worried. How about you guys? What's up, chat? What do you guys think? I got two of y'all in here. Wow. I'm not getting nobody in here. I, I hate having to do titles that make people come in. I guarantee you I did like a, like a uh, Matt. What do you call them? A uh, clickbait title. It would get more attention. But anyway, so is life, right? I'm start whining. All right. So what's the next thing we're going to talk about, guys? Next thing that I wanted to talk about big time was Cardano. Cardano techn technical analysis, guys. I think that a lot of people are sleeping on Cardano. And Cardano is going to be doing big things. What is this? I'll talk about this later. All right. All right. So Cardano, Cardano. Uh... Cardano's in the middle of a substantial pullback right now. No question. As you can see, it uh, February 7th, it was a long signal change for previous trend. But after that, we did a bearish continuation uh, sell signal. And it's a pretty significant drop off here. Now, it does look like we've bottomed off with some support. 
but uh, only time will tell. Let's go ahead and draw a support line up on there. All right, so there's a support line for Cardano. Um, for Cardano, you'll see that um, we had a sell signal. We wrote down through this channel, and right down here, we have a long signal, and we're just at the beginning of a channel. And if we look at the two-hour chart, it probably looks much better than that. But before I do that, the momentum's down on a, on a four-hour chart, but the volume is up. Cash flow is negative. RSI is over oversold is oversold in a way of being overheated oversold. So if we look at the two-hour chart, let's see if it's a little bit more healthy. Two-hour chart is indicating that Cardano is trying to pull itself up by his bootstraps. As you can see, the support line is holding. Long signal channels looking good. Volume is up slightly. Uh, and the RSI is trying to go towards a neutral, I don't want to say positive, but a neutral direction. Now, if you look at Cardano with the exponential moving average on a four-hour chart, let's do the, the daily chart first. Daily chart has it bearish. Four-hour chart is going to be very bearish. Go figure, right? And the two-hour chart is bearish. Now, if you look at Cardano, do I want to look at this one today? Well, the fear and greed indicator down here has Cardano as fearful. Uh, we'll look at the moving averages. What the heck? Now, we have the 20-day moving average has dropped underneath the 50 and 100. And right here, you can see that 20 days purple. 50s green, 100s uh, that orange, and it's dropping beneath both of them, and it's heading towards uh, the 200-day moving average. And I heard other uh, tubers talking about this earlier, so I'm not the only one that sees this. So it's definitely uh, Bitcoin's the same way with that moving average. You know what? Let's look at that right now. I should have talked about this earlier. Uh, we'll jump up here to Bitcoin, and I guarantee you Bitcoin's approaching that same death cross. Yes, it is. There it is. And Bitcoin's heading down towards that death cross right there. It's not good, guys. Looks like Bitcoin might have a significant pullback. Back to Cardano. All right. So Cardano on the um, four-hour chart, which goes four days into the future, you can see that Cardano is looking quite bullish a little bit, and then it's going to go bearish. And if you look at the daily chart, which goes, I don't know, till March 7th, it's actually predicting Cardano to be relatively pretty bullish moving forward. So Keep your fingers crossed, right, guys? Hey, for the people that just joined, because only three of you is dead in here. It's not a good time to do streams on Fridays at Rush Hour, obviously. I now know. Please hit that like button. All right. Anyway, so Cardano's definitely doing a pullback. Nothing much to say for it. I do want to draw out a little bit of technical analysis here for my few fans i have <laughs> and i thank want to thank each one of y'all for being here it means a lot to me actually um so this is the bottom support level for cardano right now and it's at 23 cents it did hit that point on december 30th and you can see since december 30th cardano's absolutely taken off in my opinion what well, a whole market did but cardano did too i just think cardano has a much brighter future than a lot of those projects in the market because you got to remember a lot of things would disappear cardano ain't going nowhere guys um, I mean, look at Solana. <laughs> I need that same more. And I don't think Solana's going nowhere. I thought they were, but nope, they're good. Sorry about that, guys. I'm thirsty as heck. All right, so uh, Cardano from its bottom point, um, where it is currently resting now, it is up 49%. Wow, that's a nice little run up, 47%. But um, that's enough that keeps me excited. Now, let's look at a quick peek at Ergo. And yeah, remember, Charles Hawkinson referred to this project as being his number two favorite project after Cardano. That is huge, guys. So looking at Ergo right now, uh, you can see that change for previous trend on February 7th, a bearish, a long, I mean, a, a bullish continuation, a long signal, bullish continuation, bullish, bearish, a short signal, a sell signal, and floop. <laughs> So right now, but it did pull back up. So the bottom point was here. And then it recovered very quickly uh, from $1.46, which was yesterday, today, recovered very quickly. It is at $1.66 right now. So I would feel pretty safe dollar cost averaging to Ergo. I'm telling you, Ergo is going to do huge things, but it will require patience. This is when you want a dollar cost average. Pick up those crumbs, guys. Pick up those crumbs. Take those profits when you can. Keep that dry powder. Market does a pullback like it did today. You take that dry powder. You pick something up. Look, it doesn't look like a pullback right now. Look at this. God dang it. Gosh dang it. Ajax. 
I want to talk to you guys about Ajax. I can't. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I just went running. Uh, I can't catch this Ajax for nothing. It took off for me again. Son of a gun. All right. So I'm going to be picking up some Ajax when I'm done with this because I think this is going to be big regardless. Um, and it's against my rules to chase stuff. All right. So jumping into Cardano's ecosystem here. Um, I don't know if you guys are using tap tools. This is like one of my favorite freaking tools. Now, Jack Fritz turned me on to this. He's a great guy to follow on Twitter and his YouTube channel, uh, Jack uh, Fritz. But um, I absolutely love tap tools. Basically, you can connect your wallet. It's safe. You're no worries. And it'll break out your whole portfolio. I don't want to do my whole portfolio in there. And it's a little personal. I'm sure you respect this. And then you can have your chart. It does. The charting is like awesome. It's straight up awesome sauce, guys. You got it in the watch list. It's great. It, it did the, and you get access to the trading view, um, technical analysis style format. It, it, it's just great, guys. I love just tap tools. If you're not using it uh, and you own some Cardano or you're interested in Cardano, this is how you get your foot in that door, guys. Um, so right here, I say let's look at trending real quick. So this will tell you trending. Go figure, Ajax, right? So let's go ahead and do Ajax first. Uh, Ajax Singularity, that's Ajax Singularity, and it's AI based and it is on fire. The whole AI market in general is on fire right now, but this one here is oh, I saw something the other day I wanted to share with you guys. I hope you don't get mad. I'm kind of jumping around. Crypto tools, uh, Crypto Slate, Crypto Slate's a really cool tool here, and you could do searches on different things in it. Um, and what I did was I already saved it, but AI. So you get it's not hard to find and you can just do the sectors, AI, crypto. And this is all the AI companies that are taking off right now. When I uh, saw this on Trayvon James channel, I was like, sweet. I'm going to put this to work. AI is it looks like last time it was DeFi, NFTs. This time it's looking like AI is going to be the crypto industry for the next bull run. It really does feel that way. Um, Ajax is what I've known about this one for quite a while. I remember that little Android talking at the uh, Cardano uh, convention a little while back. I think that was preceding the bull run. It was preceding it. And um, Ajax is just on fire, guys. Look at this. From February 1st, uh, uh, from February 1st until it, it shot all the way up here on February 8th, it has experienced a little bit of a pullback, but it's taking back off again. So I'm actually, when I get done this video, I'm going to be picking up some Ajax, a, a, a real portion of it. I hate chasing things. But I got a funny feeling if I don't chase this baby, I might screw up. So I'm going to chase this one because I've known about it for a long time. Uh, Charles Hoskinson has talked about this one many of times back in the day. And everything's finally coming to fruition, you know. And it's just not on my clock. So let's see. I'm going to do a fib retracement real quick. And the FIB retracement will be at its high point to the bottom right here. I just want to see that. 50, okay, it's just under that 50% marker right there. Okay, so that's a cool time to pick it up. Um, but, yeah, I'm definitely going to pick up some Ajax. Now, if you were to follow the FIB and do it from the proper way for the 100%, for the 100 marker, uh, the 61.8 is a magic spot. So the magic spot, according to the FIB, Fibonacci for the lower point when it started to take off would be uh, at 91, 0.91%. But I'm not going to be patient enough. I'm going to go for it to pick up some now. So I got a funny feeling this one has some wheels on it. I don't know. I don't have anything to base it on. Just my gut feeling. You know what I'm saying? Um, but Ajax is huge. Singularity, singularity um, is AI based. Uh, it's. It's, it's going to be big, guys. I, I got a good feel on this one. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just an ordinary guy with a passion for cryptocurrencies. Essentially, you do your own research. Uh, now, you can see here from this bottom point when it took off, it's 890% increase since January 6th. Oh, my gosh. Talk about profit. Kudos to those of you that got it right. A smack in my face because I got it wrong. I have four of them. And the only reason I have those four, I believe I got them with drip drops. But anyway, let's keep it going. Uh, another one I want to talk to you guys about was a uh, World Mobile Token. Mobile Mobile Token is one to watch very closely. They are bringing internet access to the third world countries in Africa, and that's going to be a very huge. And it's been talked about on Cardano forever, forever. But as you can see, it has some really good 
it's definitely on an upward trend, as you can see right here. So um, it's definitely something to take seriously because the bottom level, you have a you have a trend. Let me do it like this so it makes more sense. So on about you see that upward trend from down here, and then with the horizontal line in here, with the horizontal right here. All right, so you can see that it's currently it's still on an upward trend. Now it did have some explosive growth, had a very significant pullback. But this is when you want to buy. You want to buy one of pullbacks, and this is a significant pullback. I'm probably going to be picking up some today, but it's a significant pullback. And yeah, need I say more? I want you guys to keep an eye on this one. Now, from this point, do you, should I do a Fib retracement? Mm, yeah, let's do a Fib retracement because I got a funny feeling this Fib retracement is going to be much better than the, the the AGI one. Let's see. Yep, this Fib retracement from this bottom point there, or with World Mobile Token, if the sixty-one point eight is the magic, that's the golden sweet spot. Spot, all right. That's the sweet spot. All right, let me open this up here. I got ready to say something inappropriate, but I decided not to. But you know what? It's my channel, so I'm going to do what I want. I was, it's in the sweet spot, the nappy dugout. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So the 61.8, that's the magic spot there. And that's at uh, 52 cent. And that's actually pretty much where it's sitting right now. So this is the time I'm going to pick this one up. I'm going I'm to I'm take a piece of paper. I'm going to write this down. And I'm doing this today. I'm, I'm tired of playing these games. So I do videos, and I don't follow up. And it's kind of funny, but yes. All right, so I'm definitely going to be picking up some more mobile token and Ajax today. And don't forget, Cardano now has DJet. DJet is a um, a stable to stable coin, so it's just a stable uh, following the dollar. You know what I'm saying? And if I'm not mistaken, Swan. It's not Swan. I forgot what it's called. I forgot what it's called. I don't want to read. It's a coin that DJet works off to keep it stable, but well, I'll talk about that another time. I forgot what it's called again. All right, another one I wanted to mention to you was Liquid. I brought too much Liquid Finance the other week. Kind of pissed me off a little bit. But, you know, I forgot that I had brought it in the past, so I'm have over, I'm too exposed, overexposure, but I just had to ride it out. But right now, it is in the middle of a 51% pullback from that high point on January 26. And yeah, Good time to pick it up, guys. I don't even got to do a fit retracement on this one. So you definitely want to take a look at this one. It's a pullback 51%. It's original pullback. This bottom to that bottom line was put the pullback was all the way, what, 65%. So you definitely want to look into liquid finance. Now, uh, Copia, Copy, Co Quarter Copious. Duh. Quarter Copious. I was listening to a video earlier today. Let's go to their website real quick. Uh, Cornucopius is releasing. I got to buy Copy too today. There's a bunch of stuff I was looking at today. All right. Uh, Cornucopius is uh, a game. Mm -hmm. I spelled it wrong. Yes. One time, I was so busy typing away, I typed in something. I went to a porn site. It was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> All right. So Cornucopius is going to be releasing a racing game. They said in the video today, the racing game should be released late Q1, early Q2. Well, guess what? We're approaching late. Q1 and we're approaching early Q2. So I am going to go ahead and pick it up. I already own some NFTs and all, but this is going to be hotness, guys. All I can say is hotness. Uh, I guess you can uh, sign up for the game testing, but I'm not really too worried about that. I did see that they're the uh, Cardano convention thingy and people are really liking it. The racing, uh, let's say, view in game assets. Uh, vehicles. Let's look at the land. What the heck? But um, yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be huge, and it's not that uh pixelated crap that you know that was being pushed on a previous uh, uh bull market. So if you guys do not have any cornucopias, I suggest you really look at it, look into it. If you can see it is bottom out point here, recent bottom out point January fifteenth, it's increased by forty seven percent since then. Need I say more? keep eye out on it guys now i'm not a financial advisor i just have a passion for cryptocurrency and if i get it right make sure you subscribe and hit that like button if you haven't hit that like button hit that like button i only have two viewers in here but i know i have more followers than that's so i don't know but i'm gonna keep doing my best <laughs> all right so i only got four likes what 
I only got four likes. So whoever's in here, make sure you hit that like button, please. Gosh darn it. All right. Uh, let's see here. And what else did I want to talk about today? It's 530. Uh, there was something else I wanted to cover. Okay. Another project that I wanted to talk uh, something I wanted to talk about was this article. And that was with the DJ. It says, is Cardano at risk of becoming the next Terra Luna? All right. So the launch of the new algorithmic stable coin appears to be receiving mixed reviews from investors. When it comes to the cryptocurrency sector, Cardano, ADA, uh, has been gaining traction as a major player. It's a highly anticipated project that has already generated its fair share of buzz, given its proof of stake consensus mechanism and status as top 10 crypto by market capitalization. That said, some investors wonder if Cardano could go the way of Terra Luna, a cryptocurrency that failed to live up to its hype and ultimately faltered. That's because Cardano has just launched its own algorithmic stablecoin, GJ, this week. How might this launch affect Cardano's risk profile? And is it a good or bad thing for investors? Cardano, the next algorithm to save according. All right, this week has been a big one for Cardano with developer Cody announcing the launch of DJED on Tuesday. This uh, this article is not that new anyway. Okay. Uh, you know what? This is FUD article. I'm sorry, guys. I'm actually reading really FUD to you. I'm kind of embarrassed. But anyway... Um, so yeah, I guess I'll be going for almost an hour. That's my usual. Uh, thank you, Will, for showing up. Everybody who watches this video, hit that like button. I want each and every one of you watching this video to hit that like button today. And yeah, until next time, stay retro. All right, guys. Peace out.